Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Ride and Handling, Testing, Modification and Development. What I want to do in today's video is talk about why not all body roll is bad. Now, if you read any uh, road tests by journalists, they'll talk about the fact the car's got a lot of body roll, in implicitly suggesting that body roll is bad. But that isn't necessarily the case. Let's look at why. Firstly, a car with very little body roll is actually a poor road car. Now you might be going, surely not. You want to get rid of as much roll as possible, don't you? No. But conversely, a car with a lot of body roll is also a poor road car. So clearly we're talking about a balance between too much body roll and too little body roll. Let's look at why. Most standard cars of the last 10 or 15 years, maybe even 20 years in some cases, have very little body roll, tiny amounts of body roll. You see a photograph of, of them cornering at maximum G values and there's almost no body roll at all, three or four degrees. Now, the big issue is this is usually achieved by using very stiff sway bars, sometimes called anti-roll bars. Now, what's the problem with very stiff anti-roll or sway bars? Two, two problems. Two stiff sway bars give you very poor ride quality. Now you might say, oh, I don't care about ride quality, but you might care about the next one. But let's stick on ride quality. If you go over a one wheel bump, and most bumps on real roads are one wheel bumps, the roll bar, the sway bar, adds to the spring rate on that corner. It makes that corner stiffer. So when that wheel goes over that bump, the car tends to accelerate in roll. It goes like that as you're going over the bumps. And if you watch a car driving down the road in front of you and it's got overly stiff sway bars, you can watch people's heads going back and forth like that as you go over the bumps. It's extremely uncomfortable. But more importantly, if you're interested in handling, overly stiff sway bars give you very skaty wet weather handling in any slippery conditions dirt, snow, wet roads, the car will slide very, very easily. Now, the reason that modern cars, last 10 or 15 or 20 years, can get away with that is they've all got stability control, traction control, and that catches them as soon as they start to slide. My wife's Mercedes, now sold, used to be so slippery in wet conditions. You'd see the, the stability control, traction control, flashing all the time because it was so stiff in roll that it just slid rather than gripping and going around the corner. So two stiff sway bars have two major disadvantages, poor ride quality in roll accelerations and very skaty in wet weather or slippery conditions. So reducing body roll by using very stiff sway bars actually has some major trade-offs. And that's a critical part of this video. Now, you might be saying, but don't we reduce weight transfer if we reduce body roll? No, you don't. Lateral weight transfer during cornering depends only on three factors. The height of the center of gravity of the car, the vehicle track, how wide apart the wheels are, and how hard you're cornering. The actual amount of total weight transfer laterally does not depend on body roll. Now take that on board and really think about it. I think a lot of people implicitly assume you want least body roll to have least weight transfer, but in fact the total lateral sideways weight transfer does not vary according to what sway bars you have, or not even vary according to how stiff the, the car is in roll. Okay, what sway bars do is they change how much weight transfer occurs at the front or the back. So they shift that lateral weight transfer so more is being borne by the front wheels or more is being borne by the rear wheels. Now, the more weight transfer there is at one end of the car, the earlier that end will slide. That's assuming equal weight to distribution, front rear, equal tire size and so on. So you use your sway bars to tune the handling in terms of understeer or oversteer and they're very, very important in doing that. But take a step back, remember, less body roll does not mean less total weight transfer. The weight transfer stays the same. Sway bars just change how much the front or the rear wheels 
uh, cope with that weight transfer, have that weight transfer. Completely different idea. Now, why is too much body roll bad? I've said why too little body roll is bad if you're using very stiff sway bars. Well, too much body roll has one major downside. Now, we can see in the 2CV it's got more body roll than probably any car you'll ever see. The problem is the outside wheel, the one that's taking all the load, develops positive camber. It's no longer vertical to the road. It's actually leaning the wrong way. And as soon as the wheel starts to lean the wrong way, the tyre has less grip. So too much body roll causes positive camber to occur on the outside wheels. That reduces grip, will lead to the car sliding. But you can see the amount of body roll there is enormous. So certainly, surely the outside wheels will be losing a lot of traction because of their angle to the road. But that's an extreme. We can go back to three or four degrees of body roll, maybe even five degrees, and we still have the ability to cope with skatey conditions, and we still have the, the wheel largely vertical to the road. You can see it's this, this compromise between the two ideas. Too little body roll, especially through stiff sway bars, bad ride quality, and that is really wearing. If you say, oh, I don't care about ride quality, wait until you're on a bumpy road and you just get worn out after 50 or 100 kilometers, and skatey in slippery conditions. It's not uh, serendipitous that race car drivers soften off their sway bars when it rains. They've got adjustable sway bars to allow you to do that. In your road car, you try to pick sway bar stiffness that doesn't give you a loss of control in wet or slippery conditions. Now, what if your car's already very stiff in roll and you want to change that front rear lateral weight transfer to tune the handling, to change the understeer or oversteer balance? Instead of going for even stiffer sway bar at one end, you might decide to soften the sway bar at the opposite end. And in another one of my videos, I give an example of doing that on my MG4 X Power. I wanted to reduce the understeer, so rather than stiffening the rear bar, it's already a very stiff car and roll, I soften the front bar. So remember, you can go both ways. Don't just always go stiffer thinking it'll be better, it will not be. On the road, Having tiny body roll, almost no body roll, has ride and handling disadvantages. So don't think less roll automatically equals a better car. Now, and, and that's a pic of me driving the old uh, MX-5, lovely uh, oversteering car around that corner, shows about the amount of body roll I think is pretty good for a road car. Now you might say, but hold on, if we have too much body roll and we're going through an S-bend, the, 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 the body will flop from one side to the other because we're not controlling it. Control body roll in transients when change is occurring through stiffer damping, stiffer low speed, uh, shaft speed damping. All right, That's how you control that flip-flop weight transfer rather than just going stiffer and stiffer in anti-roll bars. The book, Vehicle Ride and Handling, Testing, Modification and Development, one of the key agendas of that book is to, to get rid of some of the mis misconceptions, to address some of the misconceptions that are so prevalent in uh, ride and handling circles, especially um, people who, who, who go to internet discussion groups and say, what should I do? Oh yeah, stiffer and stiffer, that'll make it better. For a road car, no, it won't. The book's out uh, August 2024. If you're looking at this video after that, it'll be out now. It's available from Amazon in your country. Thank you.